this video we're going to do a proof with ranks. So let A be an m by n matrix. We want to show that if a matrix B is n by P, then the rank of AB is less than or equal to the rank of A, and the rank of AB is also less than or equal to the rank of B. So there's really two questions here. A will be rank AB is less than or equal to rank A, and then B will be rank AB is less than or equal to rank B. Okay, so the first thing is we should remember that the rank is really just the dimension of the column space. So when we say rank AB is less than or equal to rank A, we're saying that the dimension of the column space AB is less than or equal to the dimension of the column space of A. So for part A, we're going to start by taking a vector V and it's going to be in the column space of AB. So what this means is that we can write any vector V as AB times some other vector X. Using the associativity properties, we could also write this as the matrix A times vectors VX. So what this means is that this vector V is really just a linear combination of the columns of A. So we can say that V is also in the column space of A. So if we take any vector in the column space of AB, we're going to get a vector in the column space of A as well. So this means that the column space of AB is a subspace of the column space of A. So what do we know then? Well, if column AB is a subspace of column A, then the dimension of the column space AB is going to be less than or equal to the dimension of the column space of A, because the dimension of a subspace clearly can't be bigger than the original vector space, which means that the rank of AB is going to be less than or equal to the rank of A. Okay, so the first part is now done. For the second part, well, now we need to show that the rank AB is less than or equal to rank B. Well, we're going to use the rank theorem for this, and we're also going to use what we learned in the first part here. So let's think about the rank of AB. So by the rank theorem, we know that this just is equivalent to the rank of AB transpose. So here's the question, why are we dealing with transposes? Well, rank B, now we have to show that all of the row vectors are going to be linearly independent. Okay. So rank of AB transpose is going to talk about the row vectors. So this is just the same thing as the rank of B transpose times A transpose. It's because we distribute the transpose. Now using part one, so now we're in transpose territory. So we know that the rank of AB is less than or equal to the rank of A, therefore, the rank of B transpose A transpose is going to be less than or equal to the rank of B transpose. Okay, and this again, using the rank theorem, is just equal to the rank of B. So here we've also shown that the rank of AB is less than or equal to the rank of B. Okay, so that's it for that proof. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll answer them the best that I can.